a tree falls in the forest. But not just any tree. One specifically marked for harvest. And not just from any forest. This is the forest that's home to the Menominee people. A lot of them say the forest is them, you know. It's been here. It's their inheritance. Inherited from ancestors like Chief Oshkosh, who negotiated to keep the reservation in northeast Wisconsin in 1854. Oshkosh also said if they cut selectively toward the setting sun to the end of the forest and turned back to the rising sun, the trees would last forever. At first glance, it looks like a forest that hasn't been managed. It's anything but that. Although the technology has changed, Oshkosh's sustainable strategy is still in play, allowing the tribe to harvest timber and mill much of it themselves, creating jobs and economic opportunity on the reservation. The forest now actually holds more timber than when they started and is better equipped than many forests in Wisconsin to withstand the impacts of a changing climate. As chief of the Forest Service, I uh, look at the Menominee as a, a real success story. Some of the best old growth stands that we have are in the Menominee uh, tribal land. Old growth, or forests that include trees that are hundreds of years old like the Menominee, are very rare in Wisconsin and the Great Lakes states. In the 19th century, large-scale timbering began, and most of the region's great pine forests were simply clear-cut. In about 50 years, all of the forests of northern Wisconsin were cut. And it was a, a very destructive, it was not managed or regulated in any way. Northern Wisconsin became known as the cutover. After efforts to farm it failed, it was eventually reforested. But climate change poses a new threat to these younger forests. Younger forests are less resilient than older ones because they are less diverse. Largely comprised of single tree species, these forests are at risk if those species can't thrive in warmer temperatures or survive more frequent droughts. Maybe by 100 years, we'll really uh, start to lose a lot of our, what we consider sort of iconic northern species, which are the evergreens, you know, the spruce, the fir, paper birch, aspen, uh, might be lost. And it's not only growing conditions that may change, warmer temperatures also promote the spread of diseases and invasive species. Every species has an invasive species after it. <laughs> but the fates of these younger forests are not yet sealed, and a group of University of Wisconsin scientists have embarked on a long-term study to see if they can make younger forests behave more like older forests, to become more diverse and, therefore, more resilient. It's an experiment in the Flambeau River State Forest, a young forest mostly made up of sugar maple, about 150 miles northwest of the Menominee. In older growth forests, diversity develops over time, as larger trees get knocked over by wind, creating openings in the canopy. These gaps let in sunlight, which creates better conditions for other kinds of tree species that require more light and warmth. In the Flambeau experiment, canopy gaps have been artificially created to mimic what happens in the more diverse, older growth forest. We're inside the exclosure. Okay, we're inside the big one. Inside I keep the big forgetting one. That. He's yeah. heading towards the... Already there are other species growing up in the larger gaps where light is allowed to penetrate. The scientists hope that making this forest more diverse will help it stay healthy despite the impacts of global warming. And there is an added bonus. The world's forests absorb two and a half billion tons of carbon every year. So by preserving more trees, we can actually help slow the rate of climate change. Climate change is essentially a disruption of the carbon cycle. And what are forests so particularly good at? Storing carbon, taking carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere through photosynthesis and sequestering it or storing it in tree trunks, in leaves, in root mass, in the biomass of, of the forest floor. How all those elements of the forest store and release carbon is being measured in the Flambeau experiment. Data is being collected to determine which factors maximize carbon storage, like how big the canopy gap should be, and how much wood should be left to decay. Eventually, the results can inform how forests are best managed for carbon capture. 
But like anything involving trees, it will take time. The research is planned as a 50-year study. The way the climate is warming, potentially we have less than a half century to really try to do something about it. It's been more than a century and a half since Oshkosh's time, and the Menominee people and their forests have endured. I think seeing the forest and seeing it held intact, I think, has enabled the Menominee to maintain their cultural identity. Welcome to the land of Menominee. It's great to see you all here representing... Recently, the Menominee hosted the annual meeting of the Intertribal Timber Council. They were able to show off their forest to other tribes from the Pacific Northwest, Northern California, and the South. It's like this, you can grow a number of different species. You can grow white pine. Ash, but it was also a time to talk about the shared struggles of managing resources in uncertain times. Some of these new challenges of sustainability are probably new in our lifetimes. Challenges that will require drawing on both traditional practices and cutting edge research to ensure the future of our forests. Some of these answers lie within different communities that maybe help resolve these daunting questions about climate change. So I think it's, it's getting back to that and reassuring ourselves that a solution is not impossible.